we start in what seems to be some sort of white supremacist paradise called Argo City where a bunch of alien Caucasians wander about barefoot because apparently no one can afford shoes in this place. Anyway, we soon meet young Kryptonian Kara Zorel, whose magical wizard mate named Zoltar is a total kleptomaniac because he's only gone and nicked some magical orb thing that totally powers a place called the Omega Hedron, which is super dangerous given the city now apparently exists in a pocket of transdimensional space after the rest of Planet Krypton exploded real good and proper in the original Superman films. Anyway, this Zoltar fella really wants to visit Earth and look at some natural trees what grow there IRL. But after he hands her his pointy shaft and lets her play with his wand, it's steady. She brings a glass butterfly to life which bursts through the friggin walls, sending the precious orb soaring off into transdimensional space and leaving their ethnocentric city totally doomed to slowly wither and die if it ain't retrieved within a very specific 3-4 to four days. And after Zoltar gets bollocked by Kara's dad Zorel for recklessly stealing their main power source and then promptly getting condemned to the Phantom Zone now everything's gone tits up, a guilt ridden Kara decides to jump in his prototype spaceship and head off after it. So, after travelling through transdimensional inner space, what seems to just consist of dodgy rear screen projections, and also journeying through the cold hostile vacuum of space in a flimsy ship, what looks like it's made of paper mache, we cut to a cosy picnic on Earth, where a novice yet power hungry witch called Selina totally moans about being so utterly lame, and whines about how her magical warlock partner Nigel can't even find his own wand these days. <sighs> or some shit. Anyway, after wishing she could be much more powerful, that Omega Hedron thing totally lands slap bang in her soup. And before you can say, either this is law of attraction in action or there's one heck of a good golfer nearby, she realises she don't need no pussy old English bloke teaching her crappy tricks now she has proper magic, so promptly tells him to sod off and not to contact her no more. Meanwhile, Kara's ship has magically materialised under the lake somehow, and she now has a new set of clothes also somehow and she soon soars out of the lake and onto the shore of an alien planet. And before you can say, why did an old magical wizard have a young girl skirt in his ship and how did she come out of the lake bone dry? She just does some dancing and prancing in the woods whilst practicing her newfound flying skills on obvious wires, before then scaring a bunch of horses in front of truly terrible green screen. Later, at a random abandoned fairground, naughty witchy Pusselina and her snarky assistant Bianca are totally over the moon that they've now found a magical power source that grants them everything they've ever wanted and will apparently also somehow pay the bills and shit. Whilst Kara arrives in the seedy part of town and gets instantly accosted by a pair of redneck sex pests. Hilariously naive and hopelessly clueless, she politely greets them and asks where the freak she is, before one leers at her ass and compliments her on her super buns. But she just tells him to stop being a creepy pervert and pull himself together, son. Cause she's called Supergirl and is totally Superman's cousin, bro. But they just shrug and continue to perv over her fluffy hair and super jubblies. So naturally, she smacks them up and blows them away with her super stinky garlic breath. And before you can say, if you know she's Superman's cousin, why would you try and sexually harass a superpowered alien who also has a superpowered alien relative who once smacked up a bull ban in a wig and has a godlike power of turning back fucking time by flying around the world super fast? We cut to a party in the fairground, where some bird gets so blindingly drunk that she starts showing off her break dancing skills. Itchy, I mean, gets put under a spell by Selena to show off her wicked new powers and she. After seemingly sleeping in the woods like a fucking hobo tramp because reasons, Supergirl uses her superpowers of super nonsense to partially change clothes whilst walking between trees. And then decides to attend the local school also because reasons. And she says she now identifies as Linda Lee now, and then tells her new roommate called Lucy Lane that her cousin Clarkie Kent is totally banging her sister Lois, so they should totally be friends and stuff. And after convincing the principal that she's totally legit by forging a recommendation letter from her journalist cousin, the phony faking new student promptly learns that said cousin Superman is currently off-world on a peace-seeking mission exploring new galaxies and she and hopefully not participated in any foreign horse riding competitions. Bruh. Elsewhere, Selina also ends up at the school and totally slobbers over the local hunky groundsman called Ethan, 
whilst Linda soon aces all her classes, including answering a maths question that no human could possibly calculate. And naturally, that Nigel fella, who's totally and coincidentally her teacher, as well as some naughty magician on the side, I guess, asked her how the fuck she knew all them big numbers and stuff. And before she can say, I'm a full-blown autist who puts Rain Man to shame, she ends up saving Lucy from a small ball and also some shower bullies. Later, Selena brews a love potion and totally puts a spell on that Ethan fella what's about 20 years younger than her and what will make him fall in love with the first person he sees. So, after being drugged against his will by a red-headed cougar, he regains consciousness while said cougar is distracted at the door and he then wanders off into the streets like a zombified crackhead. And because this is 1984 and not current day Cali, everyone's totally shocked to see a spaced out druggie just amble through town with no shame. <laughs> Elsewhere, identity confused Carazor L, aka Supergirl, aka fucking Linda Lee, is meeting up at the local diner for a spot of lunch with a new mate Lucy, who's brought along arched to even obvious incel Jimmy Olsen for shits and giggles. But before the photographer can properly introduce himself and presumably ask if she's ever done any nude modelling before, she's distracted by some out of control construction vehicle who seems to have a mind of his own and will promptly snaps up the zombified himbo handyman into its maw, given the devious Selena Bird has put a magical spell on it so he can bring him back to her and stuff. But naturally, Shopa Girl just can't be having out of control construction vehicles with a mind of its own coming over here gobbling up hunky men and smashing up the town and neither can her mate Lucy. Because before soy boy Jimmy can even get his camera up, she's run off into the cab to try and stop it. But hilariously knocks herself out somehow, whilst it continues to wreak havoc around the place. But luckily, that Supergirl lass eventually comes to the rescue, after previously just standing there watching gormously as her teenage mate lies unconscious in the middle of absolute carnage and endless property destruction. And she totally guides the naughty bulldozer to safety. Whilst that useless Jimmy fella just gets covered in loose hay. Oh! And as she rescues the poor sap and now back in her Linda outfit again, said poor sap totally falls in love with Linda instead of that ginger cougar. And Selena just can't believe she's been outsmarted and her plan totally thwarted by some naive team from a white supremacist planet. Fuck you! So that night, Selena uses the Omega <laughs> drone to lure Kara to her lair where she bumps into a lovesick Ethan who takes her for a spin on the teacups. But Selena soon confronts her and says that coming over here and interfering with her schemes to groom a young lad to then seduce him without his consent just ain't fucking on, son. But Supergirl says she ain't really scared of some ginger nutcase who has to put spells on blokes just to get laid and probably lobs a load of iron bars all around her before totally rescuing her beleaguered bay by flying him off in a dodgem car. Nice. After being evac to safety by a teenage girl like a right pussy old cuck, he's promptly bonked on the noggin by a passing coconut because comedy, bro. Meanwhile, Selena begs her old partner Nigel to use his special magics to teleport that Ethan fella over to her so that that interfering super hoe will totally follow. <sighs> the Sam sheet. Whilst back at the lake, Said Ethan fella bangs on about how much he loves that random Linda bird what he only met a few hours ago when she saved him from being munched up by a sentient bulldozer. But she says she's got to go, bro, because she wants one more ride on the teacups before the park closes. But unfortunately, he won't stop whining about wanting to find his Linda floozy, so she just knocks his face off to get him to shut up about it already. But when she opens her eyes, he's totally disappeared, and before she can say, bloody hell, my breath ain't that bad, son. Ethan probably finds himself teleported to his stalker's gaff, and super hot Supergirl soon flies over to a gigantic fuck off mountain which just randomly appeared in the middle of town to totally try and save him, but instantly gets caught in some sort of glass mirror. Cause in a shocking twist, what no one could ever see coming. Turns out it was all just a crafty trap, and the naughty ginger once again zombifies his young mind without his consent, and then snogs the face off of that Ethan chap, also without his consent. Right to jail, right away. And before you can say, I bet this actor couldn't believe his fucking luck when he read the script and saw all the top totty actresses his character gets to smooch. Kara is soon sent off to Croydon, England. Whoops, I meant to darken dingy hellscape but there's no hope or joy. Turns out this is a place called the Phantom Zone and she discovers all her super new superpowers are totally gone. She's all alone and she. 
So after wandering around aimlessly for a bit in the bleak landscape, she soon falls into an oily bog like a right Wally. And it looks like it's curtains for the number one super skank who essentially went to prison for her boyfriend. But luckily, she's soon saved by that kinky Zoltar fella, who seems to love keeping young girl skirts and costumes in his ship because reasons. You know, that reckless wizard guy who totally screwed the last remaining vestige of his home planet by stealing their main power source for shits and giggles and then getting himself in prison before even getting a chance to fix it? Well, he reckons her mouth's properly honking. So instantly gives her a few squirts of his much needed minty breath spray. <sighs> or some shit. Meanwhile, Selena has gone and made herself into a witchy queen and promptly puts poor Jimmy, Lucy and Nigel in a bunch of cages for insurance. And presumably to stave off the boredom of being in a cheesy 80s superhero movie what even Christopher Reeve didn't want to be associated with. Whilst back in Croydon, Kara tells the hopeless depressed wizard fella to stop moping about and cheer up already and then convinces him to take her to some place called the Rift was totally the only way out. But it's like super dangerous bro because it involves a heck of a lot of climbing and also potentially being sucked into a giant fuck off maelstrom and she. But Kara just shrugs and says well we gotta try pal because I've got to get back to saving dopey blokes from being eaten by machinery and becoming zombie cucks and stuff. So, after doing some Mission Impossible 2 style free climbing sheet, Zoltar helps Kara up the rocks and is almost sucked away by the prevailing forces, but he grabs onto her little super booties and eventually regains his footing, but then soon gets sucked off and not in a good way. And it also looks like it's curtains for the reckless rebel who totally died the one single time he made a point of not wanting to be reckless and climb up the giant fuck off cliff, as Supergirl manages to make her way to the portal and totally fly back to Earth to smack her bitch up. But naturally, Selena can't be having that, so she just threatens to eat her friends and also a naughty maths teacher. But she soon saves them and totally demands that Omega hey hey thing. But Selena just says, screw you bitch, and summons up the ex-mayor of Chicago. Whoops, I meant a monstrous shadow demon. But Supergirl totally turns the tables and uses her super speed to whip up a whirlwind and totally trap the demon thing in with her arch nemesis and also her poor assistant Bianca, who I forgot was even a thing in this film to be fair, before sending them through a small mirror where they're now apparently trapped forever. <sighs> What's Sam sheet? And after recovering the Orby McGuffin thing what totally powers the Caucasian homeland, she just says smell you later to her mates and also her first ever boyfriend who's been more mind fucked than Johnny Depp asking why his wife keeps mistaking their bed for a fucking toilet. Bruh. As she flies off back home to tell everyone the good news and that Argo City won't have to run out of power no more because she's totally retrieved the Omega Hadron Collider theme from another world would also don't seem to have a single individual from an ethnic minority background existing anywhere on the face of the planet. And that's it, that's the movie. Though my favourite part was reading the trivia section for this film on IMDb and realising that the shot of Supergirl flying out of the lake near the start was actually a 2D photo superimposed on a cardboard cutout. And the super cheap looking opening title sequence actually cost $1 million to make. No, all that money and they still couldn't afford to give the costume department enough dosh to buy basic shoes for the actors. But anyway, that's a plot and that's your lot. Considering that bell thing so you don't miss any future recaps. Oh, and also, thank you for a thousand subscribe dudes, bro. And here's to the road to 10,000. Really? All right, I suppose we'll try 2,000 first. Now tell me if you like this flick in the comments if you have time, and I'll see you in the next one.